I've already made that mistake and I'm filming this in reverse. You probably found yourself at some point wishing you had a new car like an F80 or G80 BMW. If not for the performance. <laughs> for the modern interior. Well, I can't really afford those right now, so we're going to upgrade my cheap BMW 135i with an Apple CarPlay head unit that offers pretty much the same thing, but for a wildly better price. <laughs> So I've got this kit from my favorite BMW parts place, AliExpress, for a very reasonable price, and I'll let you know how much it was later in the video. So we've got the screen itself. This is a nine inch Android unit. Comes with its own fascia trim so that it looks OEM slash stock. This thing feels like quality, feels very solid, and I'm really impressed with the build quality. The kit also includes some wires, more wires and antennas, and they've even thrown in a reverse camera, but I think we'll save this one for another time. The one thing they haven't included is any instructions, so you're gonna to have to bear with me while we wing this together. So first step, we're gonna use our trim removal tools to take out the old crusty radio head unit. So as we're going to be needing this part, we're keeping the aircon obviously, we need to disconnect it from this fascia unit, this trim piece. It's a couple of simple clips up the top, so we're just going to disconnect this one here, this top one, as well as the same on this side. So just use a little, I don't know, flathead screw, screwdriver and just press them out to pop this out. So next is to take out the actual radio section. So if you can see here, we've got two Phillips head screw parts and that should be it. So once we've got that out, there's uh, two wires on the back here. We've got the main power connector and I think this is an antenna. So just disconnect those two. We're gonna be reusing them in the new setup. So my first tip is to make sure you construct the frame first before plugging in the wires. I've already made that mistake and I'm filming this in reverse. So this is everything that we're gonna be working with. The good news is this is a fairly easy install. It's all pretty self-explanatory now that I've worked it out. The bad news is there is some cutting. So basically this uh, aircon unit, uh, I've already tried to pre-install everything, make sure it fits. These little tabs on either side don't fit because of the repositioning of where this is in the car. So we've just got to dremel off this little edge here about halfway through. So I've already just tested getting that middle bit off on this side. We're essentially just gonna cut off that between here and here. So leave that bottom part, but just this top part. So let's get to it. As always, safety first. So you can see that's pretty much flush, smooth along there. On there on both sides. Doesn't necessarily need to look pretty as uh, this is gonna be hidden. So with that out of the way, we can get back to the installation. First step is to add the uh, heated seats blocker since I don't have heated seats. Quite obviously fits in that little gap there, pretty simple. And from there, we just add in the aircon unit straight in that gap. So the trick is, you want to have both these edges outside and clipped. 
Um, that means it's snapped into position. So from here, we're using these little plastic tabs and the old radio as a donor unit. So first things first, don't get confused with these like I did. You need to snap these off like, uh, I don't know, an old transformer or something like paint a model. They're not meant to have these center tabs. So snap them both off. And then they're gonna end up in on each side. So now that I've pointed out, it must seem super logical, but when you don't have any instructions, it is confusing as all hell. So basically, uh, they're numbered, and there's a couple of numbers lining up around here. Um, this double-sided, I don't know, figure eight type of piece goes on the edges. And then this one, you can tell uh, where it goes due to these little holes that can focus. So there's little holes there that ends up going over here. You've got the other one over here. So, so this piece is installed here and then the other one is over here. So there's a little tab, if you can see that, it's quite difficult black on black. Uh, and the first piece is up here uh, with that, that's the after install. Final piece is this long tab. This is to keep the aircon from pushing back once it's installed. We can see I've got one arm already installed. The arm um, will just go over here. I also mentioned uh, using the old radio as a donor unit. Basically, this head unit doesn't come with any screws, so you're just gonna end up taking them from the old radio. So I've already started with this, but basically just unscrew all the screws and merge them over. So my other tip is to make sure you use good quality screwdrivers because they are tiny screws and you cannot get any traction or movement out of them with a poor quality screwdriver, so just use a good one. Since I've already done half of this, I only need four screws, but you'll need eight in total. So we're gonna have two at the top on each side, one for this middle connector, and then one for the arm connectors on each side. So I managed to find a wire diagram of the screen or a similar screen online. Let's focus on this CAN bus, see if we can get things started. So the wires do come in two goodie bags to make things a little easier. This looks like the CAN bus bag. So let's focus on that, plug that in and see what connects where. So we've plugged in the CAN bus BMW decoder to the main power harness. There are four wires hanging off this, which I have no clue what they're for. Then we've got AUX left in, AUX right in. I've got this other little wire that just makes sense to plug in there. Next, we're just gonna go in order. So we've got two USB cables. One is six pin, one is four pin. So there's a spot for each of these at the top here. Now I've got the GPS cable, I do want GPS. No instructions is super confusing. So I've just figured out that this is GPS here, and this needs to plug into that, so I'll plug that in now. I think this is the radio antenna, so that goes straight into the green hole. And then this looks like to plug into the dock OEM wire from the original radio. This one mentioned 4G, and you can see that I can put a SIM card in there. I don't want to do that, but it has this wire here, which looks like it needs to connect to this fan here, as well as these look like they connect. So I've gone ahead and connected the audio in. Everything else is basically in a logical place. So moment of truth, we're gonna plug it in, hope for the best. It's on. Yes, this looks all right. So there's a whole heap of settings that we'll have to end up going through, but let me do some setups and uh, come back to you. So it looks like we have CarPlay working. Everything you need, music, Google Maps, Spotify Waze, hell to the year. All right, we're finally on the home stretch. So with everything now plugged in and we've tested the unit, 
all of the tabs are attached. It's now a pretty quick and easy process to permanently attach it to the car. Simple as lining it up, finding the gaps, clicking it in. Pro tip, use zip ties to try and help with the cable management. It does get a bit crazy back there. That is looking clean, super stoked with that. And always, the moment of truth. Boom. Fresh as. So what's my final verdict and how much did I pay? So based purely on adding CarPlay and updating the interior, I will give this an eight out of 10. If we're talking about the unit as a whole and the whole installation process, probably more like a six, seven. So outside of Apple CarPlay, the system's a little quirky. Uh, you've obviously got this homepage theme. Google Maps doesn't seem to work from the homepage here. You can update the themes. Uh, these are mostly paid. I think there's ways to, you know, add in BMW, startup logo, M logo, that kind of stuff if you're, if you're into that. Um, the GPS and all that sort of things are a bit quirky as well. Um, one of the main ones was the equalizer. You have to play around this to get the settings to sound good. Um, it sounded like there was no bass at first, so I wasn't sure if I'd install it correctly. But you've really just got to pump the bass. So this is the Apple CarPlay loading screen. Sometimes it can be a bit temperamental as it is wireless, which is a win. You do have the wired option, you've got the plug here. But generally, if you keep it in the one CarPlay system, it loads up. When you start up the car, you've just got to click the loader application. I'm happy with this, so happy to keep it as is, plus obviously the modern interior update. So what about sound quality? Well, we'll put on a quick banger. I'm gonna give that a thumbs up for sound quality. And finally, how much did I pay? Well, that's the best part. It was only 450 Australian, which is about 300 American dollars. That's a big win. If you're interested in buying this for yourself, there'll be a link down in the description. So if you're new here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.